So welcome back. Nana here, and then we are in the next day's program on this fusion order management implementation. <coughs> Yesterday, I found that uh, uh, that instance was not even working for the vision item itself. Then I found that there is a problem. Then I switched over to another instance. It worked perfectly with the vision item. So I will now demonstrate the vision item on another instance. No fine. So this instance is having an issue because of which it is not working. So let us go and then see this one. Fine. Manufacturing, I'm going to say. I've not set everything. Uh, I thought that, okay, fine. I will not demonstrate. The setups are exactly the same. Uh, whatever, wherever you're doing, the setups are the same now. So let us go there and then have a look at it on the vision instance, on another vision instance. <sighs> so here it is working perfectly. So in this instance, we'll now go on and create a sales order for a vision item actually. So I go to the order management and then I go to the order management and then let me create an order for a vision item. For a back-to-back -back make. This is what we normally used to demonstrate in a Oracle University training program. There they discourage us in setting up everything. So we have to follow the activity guide in which what happens, we'll be using this item as a in this place. I'm a trainer in Oracle University also. <clears throat> so I now put the US1 business unit and I'm putting it now. Fine, right? Click on it. So it's a EAS, it's a 5811150. Let me put it over So this one, fine, is a vision server. <clears throat> I will now go for let's say five quantities on this one. And then I click on add. So click on add. So this item has been configured in 051 org now. So go there, click on this, and then we'll now put the org as 051. Supply org is 051. The org in which they have created everything. The manufacturing is also created in this place only. <coughs> so you go there, and then click on save now. The order is getting saved. So 97370 is the order number. And click on submit. Click on submit. 97370 is order. We are now going to process it on this now. On the do workflow, on the generic process workflow, we are going to process now. Actions and then go to switch to fulfillment view. And then you go to the fulfillment lines. <coughs> and then go further and then click on the do number now. So it's a do process. Do order flow generic process is now going to run now. After the scheduling is completed, since it is back to back enabled, it will now go for an orchestration supply request actually. The reservation is bypassed. So for all the B2B items, there is no reservation at all. Click on refresh. So the reservation will not change to request orchestration, uh, orchestration of supply. Request orchestration of supply is now coming. Thank you, contract us now. So this is now coming. Go for that. Refresh it. So the pass task is coming. Fine. The pass is completed. And then it will now go to awaiting shipping action. So at the time, it will now create a SCO now. SCO order will be created. Supply chain orchestration order will be created actually. So the supply request is now complete. And then it will now be going to awaiting shipping actually. After manufacturing, we are going to ship it from 051 R. So it has now gone to awaiting shipping. And then you go to the fulfillment lines and then look at the SCO number now. I click on the fulfillment number, fulfillment lines, and then go down. And then click on the supply details now. You click on the supply details, you'll now find a score number has come. The score order and it is now awaiting a supply. So we'll now take a copy of it and then look at the score now. Copy of it. I will now go right click and then duplicate. And then here I'm going to have a look at the score now. So go to the supply chain execution and then go to the supply orchestration now. Remember for this, the six uh, roles must be available. Supply chain, there are six roles are there plus the global order promising. Fine. If those roles are there, then only order when the icon will be coming. I click on it. You are getting the supply orchestration icon. And then you go there, click on it. And then you go to the manage supply lines. You go to the manage supply lines. And then have a look at it. So manage supply lines is the one. I will now go and then put my score number over here now. Supply chain orchestration number. And then click on search. You're going to search for it. So we have an order. It's a make now. So we have seen the recommendation of buy and transfer. Now it's a make now. It's a make now. So click on it. So make it. So now it will be interface to manufacturing. So you can see awaiting work order creation now. Fine. 
the organization and then if you go up and down it will not show you the manufacturing up and down go there if you go to the buy there won't be any recommendation if you go to the transfer also there won't be any recommendation if you go to the make there will be a recommendation so this code is now meant for make now find other so a work order number is now already created now work order is released 051 so work order 051 1019 is released actually so you go to the execution documents you can now see it gets reserved also automatically it will be getting reserved also and click on refresh now so as and when it gets manufactured it will be reserved for the sales order actually it will be reserved for the sales order now <clears throat> the reservation will also be created and then you go to the orchestration plan and then have a look at it now so you know you so here uh, you can now see the reservation is still pending now so the reservation is still pending go oh, there okay so work order is there reservation is pending afterwards work order will be completed then the fulfillment will be completed one by one and click on refresh now you'll be getting the reservation so reservation is also completed so the reservation also completed if you go to the execution documents you can now see the reservation also here it gets reserved now. this is the reservation number <clears throat> so uh, you can even right click and then have a look at the reservation of and duplicate and then now have a look at the reservation for this item now so you go to the uh, supply chain execution and then go to the inventory management and then have a look at the reservation now click on it and then you go and then see the reservation manage reservations and picks so there is a task name through which we can now see this now so go to the manage reservations and picks now you go there and then i will now put the item over here now yes uh, 5841150 search for the reservations once one we have a reservation on 051 organization expand it i'm going to show you find the item expand it is for three quantities now go there if you give the sales order it will be reserved against the sales order so the item which is getting manufactured will be reserved against the sales order this reservation number now so we have got Uh, this reservation number seven three three eight eight is a reservation number now ending in seven three three eight eight and go there click on it. So once when it becomes an on and it gets reserved now. Fine, is the one. Fine. Once when it becomes on and the document number is nine seven three six six. Fine. So the sales order number nine seven three six six hyphen seven three three eight eight. I don't know whether that, that is the number or not. Remember, is a different number actually. It's a starting in three zero. Remember. So it's now actually showing you the sales order number here now. Fine. If you go on and have a look at it now. So here, if you go there, click on this nine seven. What is the number there? Same sort of number nine seven three seven zero, nine seven three seven zero, and then the quantity is five now. Come on, manage reservations. It's not showing you this at all. So quantity is nine seven three seven zero. Yeah, here it is not showing. Here is no sign. The reserved quantity is zero nine seven three seven zero. The reserved quantity is zero now. So here you can now see the work order here now. Work order number is coming. So the quantity fine. So maybe as soon as you complete the manufacturing, it gets reserved. I think probably. So it shows you again nine seven three seven zero. Here the quantity reserved is nothing now. So the demand quantity is five actually. We can even create a reservation for this now. Fine. Go there. Click on create reservation. Go on. Go there. Click on it. Item is yes. Five eight four one one five zero. And then I click on search now, for which we can even create a reservation over here now. Because the work order is already there, so we can even reserve the entire thing against the work order. Now. I think the system reserves it automatically. Nine seven three seven zero is the one. I go there, click on it. So here it is there now. Find the reserved quantity is five. It is not showing you here. The system automatically reserves it. Also. Outside it is not showing me, but inside it is already there. probably outside also it will not show you. I think it will take some time. I think probably. So outside also now reserved quantity is fine. Now I give a cancel and then have a research on this now. Click on available. See such fine. The reserved quantity is nothing. You know, click on search now. I think it will be getting this out. Oh God, it is not showing me anything at all here. Again, this is not showing me anything. But in the bottom it shows you the reserved quantity is fine now. And here the reserved quantity is not showing here. I don't know why it's the bottom at least it will show. So that's it. Now we'll now go and then do the manufacturing of it now. Fine. We'll right click and then duplicate now. You we'll know, go to the manufacturing and then you we'll know perform manufacturing on this. So you go to the supply chain execution and then now we have seen the work definition yesterday. Now you are going to see work execution now. So we we'll now go to the work execution and then you are going to manufacture the product. Okay, fine. So you are going to manufacture the product and go there. Fine. And then change the organization to zero five one now. Change the organization to zero five one and then give okay now. 
zero five one is now okay. So now here what happens? We go there, click on it, and then this place. I will not. Uh, the manage production we are not going to. So execute production is the one we are going to do. Fine. So this one. So click on the review dispatch list on the execute production. If I click on the review dispatch list on the execute production. So you can see this many are waiting for uh, a completion. Actually, fine. There are some uh, problem in the completion dates on this one. Now 2016 actually. Now you can see our order has come. One zero one nine has come now, and the chases assembly. And then the completion date is what 29th of 29th six actually. 29th six is the completion date now. And then here I go there. I will now click on the uh, what's called the hyperlink on the order number. Now. Work order number of zero five one one zero nine nine. Fine. Click on the hyperlink of it. So if you click on the hyperlink, it will now show you the generic information. The status is released now. It becomes as a released order. Now. Fine, it is eligible for uh, basically manufacturing now. So the different status are all closed on and fine unreleased also. Release on hold, close or whatever. So it's now released actually. <clears throat> and then the start date is now completion date because we don't have any lead time. Lead time is not set, and so it is now showing you the start date and the end date are same now. Item is this. This is the quantity. So if you expand the work definition, it will now show you the work definition. Is the main as a one, and then the date now fine. The production priority and version history are coming. You know, have a look at the item structure actually. So it's a primary structure. Fine, it only shows you what is the primary fund. So work definition is main, and then the structure is primary. If you click on the details, it will not show you the details now. Fine, that. So it's a standard work order, standard uh, structure actually, standard production, and then the discrete manufacturing is now coming back to back. Uh, I will now try to show you a demo on uh, contract manufacturing also. If uh, if I am able to uh, do it, fine, that one. the release date, and then if you click on the completion information, if you go there, where exactly it is going to go now? So it will be going into the completed submittal. There is a submittal component only. Over completion tolerance and other things are not being given. So this is a generic information on the main page now. And there are seven operations for this now. If I click on that operations now, there are seven operations. <coughs> if you click on this. So ten is a one. Find whether it is going to count point. Find count point is now there. So uh, it is a count point. And then the tenth one has a count point. It has got three items on it now. If I click on the items, what are the items which are going to be supplied for the tenth one? So these are the ones which will be consumed. Fine, right? now showing you these are the items. Now here itself, it's not showing you. Fine, these components will be consumed during this operation. So it shows you the three components of this. Now, fine, it is a count point, and so it is a, a must. Fine, the automatic system will prompt you to go over there now. Whereas twentieth is not a count point operation, but automatically transact. That means what? From ten, it will now jump to thirty actually. From ten, once when you complete it, the system will ask you to do thirty. Twenty, another way, the explicit rule is not uh, required. It, it it gets completed automatically. It is automatically transacted, and there are no items are available. Here. If you have items, they will also be backflushed. Actually, these items also will be backflushed. Here also, these items will be backflushed. This is a quantity which is required. Actually, in the in the uh, thing, what happens? It says how much is the stock now? Fine. It doesn't matter. It will even uh, drive the inventory negative. Fine. Like let's say like any business, what happens when you backflush it? The inventory will be driven negative. Once when you have the Uh, negative balances available on the on end is ticked on the organization now. So twentieth is not a count point operation. So from ten it will not go to thirtieth now. So the thirtieth need these four materials now. And then afterwards fortieth is again not a mandatory operation. So ten thirty and then it will not jump to fifty now. It will not jump to fifty. And then afterwards sixty is on order then. And then it will not jump to seventy. The last operation the count point is mandatory. Remember, if you don't have the count point it will not work at all. The last operation must have the count point mandatory. <coughs> And that is not editable. That is the biggest problem. So while you are creating the result, the standard operations itself, what happens? You have to make the count point on. Otherwise, it will not work at all. So ten, thirty, fifty, and seventy are the transactions on which we are going to do it now. It shows you the item, and then it shows you the corresponding resources which are going to be consumed also. So resources also available. Fine, go directly on. So all the resources are available. Fine, you are cancelled now. So it is all done now. So it is the operations. Any questions? Good. <coughs> so go there. You will now see the reservations which has been made on this. Now, I click on the reservations. Uh, you will now click on it, and then you now have a look at the reservations also. So, reservations will now show you it has been reserved against the sales order. So, so nine seven three seven zero sales order. All the five quantities, as soon as it is manufactured, it cannot be given to anybody except this sales order number. So, this is the reservation. And if you click on the history, it will now show you what are the transactions have been made, how many have been completed. Transaction history, it will now show you. As and when you perform manufacturing, it will be populating on the transaction history actually. So this is on the details of the <coughs> work order actually. So general information operations is not showing you the items as well as the resources which are going to be consumed in this one. Ten, thirty, fifty, and fifty are the count point operations that will be going via this. Close it now, and then we'll now go there. So we are now completed reviewing the particular work order now. Now we are going to perform the action. Now. 
and go to Perform. So it is now tenth operation is now ready for manufacturing actually. Fine. If you expand it, if you expand it, you can go there and then expand it. And then here uh, in EBIS, once when it is in the queue, it will now go to run, then afterwards uh, to do move, and then reject and scrap. Fine. So queue, run, to move, reject and scrap are the five interoperation steps. So they have removed the run now. Run is not available. And then the to move is also not available. The to move is also available. But it shows you the reject and scrap. The to move is what? Completion itself, it is now going to to move as such. So out of the five interoperation steps, we are able to see only two of them. The queue and then the run and then the to move cannot be seen explicitly actually. By default, it is in queue. And then as and when you complete it, it will go to to move actually. So run is not there at all here. Run is not there. So there is only two interoperation steps are shown over here now. I'm going to click on it. I will now complete the details. Okay? Tenth operation, I'm going to complete the details. I'm going to click on complete. Complete the details. So if you go there in this place, how many quantities you want to complete? If you want to complete only three or four, you modify it. Now, now presently, you're not taking for the tenth operation. Only three or three ones, you cannot change. The chases was the center of the chase assembly. And then the one. So you go there and then modify your record. And then you can even put a note over here now. Right? You can even put a note why you're doing it or whatever whatever the problems, or whatever you want to inform on this place in the tenth operation, you can put it now. So it's a tree now, it's a train actually. So click on next, it will now go to the next one. So click on next, it will go to the next one. Now back flush materials. We are now back flush the material. So these are the three materials which are required with this much of a quantity now. And if you want to make a change, you can make a change now. And if the items are serial lock control, we have to provide the numbers also. Otherwise, depending upon the inventory settings, it may even automatically pick up the lot and serial numbers, or otherwise, we only have to manually do if the inventory doesn't allow. <clears throat> so go there. So these components you can even modify on the back flush material. So click on next now. We'll go for the next now. <clears throat> so here, if you go there, auto transact resources now. It needs says it want it want this much of a resource to be done. Fine. If you want to modify, you can very well do it. And then if you want to provide an instance of a resource, we can drop it down and choose the instance also. So that will be required for a capacity planning and other things now. So normal thing will not be doing it. So we have completed all the manual entries of material and then the resource manually. And then click, click save and close. It will now 10th operation will be getting completed. Remember, afterwards it will automatically go to the 30th one, which is the count point operation. So click on save and close. It will now go to the 30th operation of count point operation 30. 20 will be auto transact actually. Since it is an automatic transaction, sign it will not be done at all. So here you can enable either count point or auto transact, not both. Count point means what? It does do it. If you say auto transact, it is now getting transacted automatically. So both are mutually exclusive over here. So you have completed the five quantities at operation number 10 now and the fourth quarter. The next operation in this was 30 now. So if you enable count point, auto transact cannot be possible. You have to manually transact it. So count point and auto transact are mutually exclusive. And go click on it. So it's not done. So the thirtieth operation is now ready for this. So expand it. No, no, one second. Can you please click on the material transaction icon? Material like transaction. The bullet mark. No, no, go to the complete details. No, no. Uh, yeah, in the bullet mark. Bullet mark. In uh, that line itself, we have a bullet mark. Huh? Yeah, that one. This is a. Uh, uh, report material transaction. No, this icon is for report material transaction. Okay. On it now, fine. So it's not allowing me to click at all. What do you do with this now? No, we are uh, reporting the material transactions in this icon itself. So that's why I checked that one. Your uh, manual reporting not required. That is no saying. Manual okay. reporting not required. And then here. Even manual, for, uh, manual uh, reporting not required. This is for the resource, not fine. This is for the resource. Report. Yeah, resource. this is for resource and this is for material. If manual, manual, uh, manual reporting, reporting is not required, how to make it as uh, enabled or disabled? And where can do it now? I think uh, we need. I think you have given auto transact. Auto transact is enabled, of course. Auto transact and reporting are two different activities, na? Right? Yeah, but uh, our side uh, we are uh, doing only manual uh, reporting only. The icon only we are using it. How it's coming? We have to see now, friend. Right? I have to learn manufacturing fully actually, and right? how to enable this manual reporting of material as well as manual reporting of transactions. And we didn't follow the backflush. Uh, Backflush is automatic. See, backflush is automatic. When you do this, it does the backflush of the inventory automatically. Okay. okay. Complete the details here. Go there. In this place, you go there and then click on next now in the backflush area. You cannot lock the record because it has already been deleted. Oh, God, what happened? I cancel now. Click on yes now. Fine. Now it got deleted actually. Uh, again, search the window. Okay. Again, search the window. Click on search now. Now coming 30th operation ready for that click on it. And then here I will now go to the complete details now. And go to the next now. <clears throat> it goes to this place. Here, if you say five, it will as soon as you go to the next step, and then you are given completion, 
if you do the completion of this, the material will be back flush in the inventory automatically. It may even drive okay. the inventory negative even if you don't have the stock actually. Okay, okay. There's the back flush. So click on next. There are four components which are required for this. Now, if I click on next now, and then these are the resources. There are three resources which are required now. So once when you give a save and close, the back flush materials as well as the auto transact resources will be automatically transacted. Got it? So okay. Click on save and close now. So it works like this. The only thing is the tick mark, I don't know where to put it. So the 30th operation is now completed. You completed five more days on the 30th operation. Then it will now go to the 50th operation. The next operation, the operation 50th operation, you go there. And then the cabinet assembly. So we'll expand it. This time, what happens is we'll make a quick complete. A quick complete will be immediately we're completing it now. It is equivalent to a move transaction of 10Q to 20Q. When you make a 10Q to 20Q in EBIS, it, the 10th operation gets completed. Here also, the quick complete will be completing this operation. They have simplified it actually. Then compared to EBIS now. So click on quick complete operation. And the 50th is now getting completed quickly. Fine with that. So the 50th is now completed. The next operation, the final operation is now 70th operation. 70th is now ready. And expand it now. And then here again, we will now perform a quick complete. And click on quick complete now. So click on quick complete. It will be inventorized actually. The product gets inventorized. And then you have completed the high quantity of operation. Then the completed uh, two sub subunitary completed transactions. So this is now completed. And so on the review dispatch list, it goes away because we have completed the manufacturing also. Fine. It is not, the 1019 is now complete. One go on down. And click on it now. And then if you go back into the one now, find this place. If you go on the uh, uh, in this place, manage supply lines, and then click on refresh now. You can see the manufacturing is complete. If you go to the orchestration plan, you can see the manufacturing is complete. The work order completion signal has to come now. So if you give a refresh, but here it's still saying work order creation only. I don't know why it's so. Even if I refresh, it is not going on. So refresh. But here at least the execution is not showing you. The execution documents are coming over here now. And then the reservation and the work order. And then if you click on the make also, it shows you all these things, you know. <coughs> The make also it shows you the work order number or whatever it is now. But in the heading, it is not getting updated actually. I don't know why it's so. The work order is released actually because it is an expansion of this now. So if you expand it, you don't do it. What happens? It's now saying in clauses actually. It is not getting updated actually. You go to the orchestration plan and then you can now see the work order completion has to be registered over here now. If I click on refresh now, the work order completion has to be the work order is completed. Now you'll go to the manager orders and then click on refresh now. Whatever the, the uh, supply will be available now. Oh, and supply, it will be saying goods available. You go there. If you click on refresh now, you will say goods available. So the goods will be available for shipping actually. Goods is available for shipping. We'll now go there and then ship it now. Go to the duplicate. And then we'll now go to the shipping of this product. So click on the supply chain resolution and then go to the inventory management. And then we'll now go to the shipment lines. Click on, click on this. So in one go, we can pick and ship also automatically. Fine, one go, we can do it now. So you'll now see what, how to do it in one go. Fine, go to the picks now. Fine, click on the picks now. We can now do the pick and ship automatically in one go. So click on create pick wave. That you have all the manual facilities now. Fine, click on create pick wave. So in the picks, we are going to do pick and ship automatically together in one go. So click on create pick wave. So here, we are going to perform all the things in one go. I'm going to click on it. So the order type is what sales order. And then what is the order number? Order number is uh, 97370. So it's a 9737 and then give a tap. It's coming automatically. So the shipping method also let me provide now. Let me provide the shipping method now. Uh, it may not be applicable for the 051 org. Okay, and leave it as it's now. And I mean, zero, once again, I'll not change the org and then bring it to 051 now. <clears throat> so go there. It's a 051 org. So we will do it on this now. 051 is an hour. Go there. Click on create pick wave. So create pick wave will now do everything automatically totally. And then if you have a rule, you can do it now. Order type is what sales order. And then uh, order number is what 97370 now. 97370. The customer will be coming automatically. Leave it as it's now. Uh, and then you go there, go to the show more now, fine. The filtering zone, we are going to do it now, fine. This is the filtering zone. So we'll now remove the filtering zone, fine. No entry, so that what happens, it will be definitely picked now, fine. We are only, only sales order. Sales order is a number which you are given a filtering now. So nine seven zero. the one filtering is sufficient, the other filterings are not required actually. And then we'll now go to the next zone, fine. The prioritization zone, fine. Go to the options now. And then the prioritization zone, we are going to mention this thing. Now. 
So the release sequence rules are pick slip grouping rules there. Automatically pick confirm, and then if you give the ship confirmation rule, it will not ship also. And go there, click on it. It will not go on there. Use the auto ship rule. So pick and ship will be totally automatic now. Fine, create ship and everything is there. This is staging submitted. So that's it. Fine. We fill up everything over there now. So the RSR and PSGR are now put. And then the ship confirmation will also put fine for that. And then when I release the PKA, it will all be completing everything in go in one go now. <clears throat> so go there. Let me release it now. So we are not done. Pick from sub inventory will be taken care of by the moment request actually. Moment request will be picking from there. So auto confirm picks is also there. So PR and then the PC will be completed as well as the SC also will be completed. The ship confirmation also will be completed in one go. So click on release now by which it will be creating a pick wave release. A pick wave will be created. So auto confirm pick is also coming. So you'll now find that everything will be done in one go now. <clears throat> it's on 051 organization. It's now creating a pick wave now. This is called a pick wave release rule. We can even have a release rule over here and then do it now. <clears throat> the release rule can be done. So you can now see the number of picks is one now. Find the pick wave is released actually. The pick wave is released. It does everything now for you. So it is now number of picks if is one and then this thing. So I will now take a copy of the pick wave and then click on it. And then I will now what happens if you uh, Add to release rule and give a cancel on the orders. You know, complete actually. Click on cancel, click on OK. <clears throat> and then here uh, we can now see this place. If you go to the pick wave, confirm pick wave will not be required at all. Confirm pick wave will not be required. If you put my pick wave number over here and then make a query ID, it will not show anything at all. So you can see the pick is confirmed already. And we're not showing you the confirm pick play. So the infolets will be giving you all the information now. And then it is awaiting pick, something like that. It will be shipped also automatically. You go there. So you now go to the confirm pick and then try to query the pick wave. So the info let itself is not showing it's already picked now on the 051 R. <coughs> so go there. What is the pick wave? Pick wave number is this now. Click on it. I will not paste it and query number. Click on search now. It is already confirmed actually. Fine. I do not think it will not show you. No see whether it is open or confirmed. It does, it does show me as confirmed actually. Or otherwise, we can even put the organization over here and then search for it. It will not show you. <clears throat> this way also we can make a search now. It's taking a long time. Is there anything as confirmed as yes? No, fine. Here there is no such field at all. Confirmed as it's not showing me. So organization is 051 and then give it app. And then all everything is all all and then make a search on this now. It will not show me as a confirmed one. It has to show me. And give it. And the bottom is still working now. So it has to show. In the meantime, what happens? You can go there and then uh, click on this now. We'll now have a look at the shipping process whether it is not shipped or not. I click on it. We'll now go to the what's called scheduled process and then see whether the send shipment advice has run now. So send shipment advice has already come behind whether it has succeeded. So it has now picked and shipped totally. You go to the manager orders and then click on refresh. What happens? It'll be going to awaiting billing now. Awaiting shipping, it'll now go to awaiting billing actually. It is not shipped, and then if you refresh it, we can do this now. So once when you go via What's called this one? Fine, go there in this place. Go there. The confirm picks. When you go via this now, we have the option of doing everything manually or automatically. Fine, that is the excellent advantage now. So if you go there, if you go and then create a release now, we can create a release rule also. Fine, create a pick wave release rule also. We can create now. If you create it, we can make everything automatically or also manually. Click on it. In this place, if you go on and see this now, if you uh, what happens? Uh, do not auto confirm picks. It will only do the pick release and not pick confirm. If you put a tick mark, it will not pick confirm. And then if you put the ship confirmation rule, it will also ship confirm actually. All the thing, pick wave, it will not create. And then pick confirmation and then the ship confirmation can be made automatically if you want. Otherwise, you can remove it. It will not stop creating at the pick wave. No. Pick release will be created afterwards if you want to. So in that way, you can automate everything now. So pick wave release rule is an excellent tool by which what happens, you can automate everything. So if you go to the orders and then click on refresh, what happens, it will be getting good, awaiting, awaiting billing. And then if you go and then see on the manage supply orders, fine, you can monitor. And then I click on refresh now. What happens? You can now see the fulfillment has also happened. SCO ensures the availability of a material on the on the on the shipping sub inventory. And then once when this is also complete, what happens? The SCO gets completed. It is not a, a SCO is fully completed. The do is not completed. So another way is do the auto invoice. If the line status will not be closed. Only when the line status gets closed, the do gets completed from an order management perspective. The order management perspective, once when the line status is not closed, the do gets completed actually. That is on manufacturing. Any doubts, Vignesh? So you have to analyze and tell me where we have to put the tick mark for manual material reporting and then manual resource reporting. Fine. Okay, sir. 
Uh, tell me from where it's coming actually, from where you are setting it up. I will check an update. Sir. I have to learn manufacturing fully because costing and lead time management I meant to learn now. Right? Once when I learn it, the manufacturing becomes complete actually for me. So I meant to learn those parts and laziness basically. <laughs> Good then. So we are now completed a back to back buy. We are completed a back to back transfer. And the back to back transfer, we have used the categories. Remember, I will tell you how exactly it will be done. Right? In, in a place, uh, I have done it now. Uh, I, will, I will show you about how exactly it will be. <clears throat> go there, click on it. I will not uh, go there. Go to this place and then go to the order management. You go to the order management and then you go to the global order. I will show you how exactly it will look like your assignment set actually in a, in a, in a real typical environment now. And go there. So click on the manage assignment search and then here we are using the global order promising on this now fine the uh, the profile is now pointing to this now fine so if you go to the manage admin profiles there is a profile called msp default assignment set that will be pointing to a profile and then that profile is, is now fine no point just my click on edit now if you click on edit you know see there will be so many category and organization assignments there item organization assignments is very rare because if you want to go via this you have to make some around 50 60000 entries now fine only for training purposes, they're doing it. In reality, if you have category organization assignments, you'll be finding plenty actually in the real, real environment. Because there you'll have around 10 or 15 categories only, all the items. And then you can do the make, buy, and transfers, all of them by a category organization. Category organization is the best. So that is, on, that is how it will be. Uh, so you have to practice on categories basically. It is a planning category, remember. It is not a your inventory category or purchasing category, it is a planning category. So we come on a panel planning catalog and then planning category will be a new thing. That's all. <clears throat> so that's it now. Fine with that. So we'll now go to the next topic called the EFF now. In e business, we use only descriptive flux fields. If you go there and then see the descriptive flux fields are extensively used in US now. We're using the descriptive flux fields. Here, we don't use the descriptive flux field for water management. They use the extended flux fields. Extended flux fields is more powerful than a descriptive flux field. So I will not say manage the inventory descriptive flux fields. So if you see, there will be manage inventory descriptive flux fields. There are plenty of descriptive flux fields. They're exactly the same like EBS now. Right? We don't have any change at all. Go there, click on it. You'll be having a global data segment for the cycle content is we go there. So click on edit now. You'll be having a global segment and then the context sensitivity segment. You'll be having global segments and then context sensitivity is exactly like this. If you go and then add it and then add a value set and values, it will now work exactly like this in the eBiz now. You can see this is a lab access for you. So there are plenty of entries, items of entries, transaction history. So so many things that we can now create the DFF section. In eBiz also, we have got so many things on which probably you can create. Whereas order management do not use the EF or DF at all. They use the extended flux fields, which is more powerful than a DF of action. Go there, click on it. We'll not see the order management now. So before which we'll now go there and see about how it is now showing you on this place. Now. Click on the now. <coughs> we'll not go on and create an order now. Click on it. We'll not create an order. So go to the order management and then click on order management and then let me create an order. Now. So once when you create an order, <coughs> you're not getting an order. So here in the actions, if you go there, there's an edit additional information is there. If you click on it, you'll now see how it's looking. So first of all, it needs this information. So we'll now put the business unit and then let me put the customer also. Computer services and metals. Go there. So they have the vision is now coming with the ready-made information of I go to the actions and then go to the edit information. It is now coming with the two informations actually, vision. So it says what? Customer loyalty and then the pricing header information. So we are going to configure our own now and with that. So what is additional information, customer loyalty, loyalty status, if you drop down, if you see this now, so we have a good gold and none as the loyalty status. And then if you go to the pricing header information, we'll have different values now. Sales channel is now coming, uh, direct, indirect, and then outside. So there is a gold and other things, and there are two values for the pricing header information. Let us now create our own on the third one. We'll now go on again. So we'll now go to this place, and then we'll now create our own. So click on set up and maintenance, and then we are going to create our own. We are going to create our own e extensible flux field now. Click on it. It is slightly tricky or slightly uh, cumbersome, but it's more powerful actually. Manage the extensible flux fields. So you go there. Go to the manage extensible flux fields. You go there. Click on it, and then we'll now create one for the header now. Click on it. I will now query the header now. Header, and then click on search. So we have a header information. Header information is available. Let me edit it now. And click on edit. So the header information is an extensible flux field now. So click on edit. So if you here, if you see, you will have one 
category called additional header information. We cannot add any categories at all. We have got only one thing. We go to this place. We go there. Can't cancel it. So go to the actions. Edit additional information. The only one available in the header actually. So the only one. So you go there. There is the only one we are doing. Edit additional information. So here in this place, we have only one category called this now. A category may have multiple associated concerns. Right? The customer loyalty is the one. And that's on it. So I will not click on the customer loyalty and the underscore of it now. And that's on it. The customer loyalty will be made. Fine, whether it is a loyalty status now. Fine, whether not as additional information is now done there. Fine, whether so the, this particular one has got a context sensitive segments as loyalty status, and then what happens is now enabled, and then the borders. So we will now have a look at what exactly it has now. If you go there, if you click on the actions and then you go to the edit additional information on the loyalty status now, find the customer loyalty is there, find the not. So loyalty status has got two list of values now. One is a gold and then one is a none now. We will now see about how they have been configured over here now and click on it. Now give it OK now. So let me go to the loyalty status now, find loyalty status. The, uh, 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 click on the manage context, manage context, manage context and then click on search now. You will be having already ready-made context over here now, find lo customer loyalty. So if you go on and click on edit now, so click on edit on the customer loyalty, you will now see what happens. The loyalty status is coming and then you go uh, edit behind the borders and then uh, I have to edit this now. Click on edit again now. Click on edit and then you can now see the value set over here now. View the value sets, the GSC loyalty value sets. Click on the view loyalty sets, value sets and then you can now see, you click on the manage values and then see, it will be having a golden none over here. Now. The golden none. So from here, what happens is now getting defaulted onto the sales orders. Let us now create our own. Let us now create a first of all a context now and click on cancel. Let us now create a context on the main segment. The edit segment can cancel it now. So I am in the main area now and cancel it. So I am in the main um, uh, area <coughs> that is in the main edit extensible flux fields now. Find that. So let us now create a context and then associate in this place now. Find that. So we had to give a cancel now. We had to get a cancel. And then if you go there, click on edit now. Find that on it. So you'll now find. So this is the one for which we already have the, these two now. Find. So let us now first create a context now and then associate in this area now. So let us now go and get a context. Click on the manage context. I'm not going to get it. Click on plus. Let me get a context. So click on plus. I will now say uh, uh, what's called you go there. I will now click on the edit now. Find. Context sensitive segments. I go there. So actions and then I will now have to add it now. Find. Go there. Display name now. I will now say. Uh, I will say revenue potential. I will just say K99 underscore revenue underscore potential. Revenue potential. You take a copy of it and then put on the code now. <clears throat> Sometimes code comes automatically. It's coming automatically. You see, I don't want to do it now. So the code and name comes automatically. Leave it as such now. The code and name comes automatically. Leave it as such. It's enabled now. It is a translatable, is a basically for language translation now. And behavior is what? I don't know what exactly is multi row. I now only choose only single row file. Beginners, you make an R and D on the multi rows now. And single row, I'm doing it. Right? Instructor help. Instruction help. So please enter the revenue potential of this customer. So we are now giving this help will be it will be prompt actually for him to enter it now. And go to the actions and then here uh, you give a save now. At this stage, you give a save. So you given the header information, at least one context usage is a must now. Find that. So without which you cannot save at all. The context usage is a must, then only what happens, you can save, click on plus and then make the usage over here. Click on plus now. And then here, you got only one usage, that is additional header information, the only usage actually. That is a category actually. It's called a category. And we'll click on it. And then you done it. Fine, give a save now. Fine. You know, added the context usage, which is a category. Fine, give a save. You know that. So you know, save. And, we'll click on it. and then the validators is okay. Fine. I don't know what is the validator code. Fine, we'll click on it. So it's not done now. Fine, we'll click on it. So after having done this, uh, we have to go to the associated categories now. Fine. We have to associate it also. Fine. Click on it. Associate. It associate it. So only when you associate the main page, it will be coming automatically. Here we can only view it now. Fine. On the main page, when you associate this usages, it will be visible. Here we don't have any plus mark on this now. Fine, it's not done. So here I will not go on then add the segments. Now, fine, Segments can be added only after the usage is not done. Right? Usage is not done. So after having given the main names over here, you give the usages now, and then afterwards you click on plus and then add the segment. Conduct the segment. I will say uh, K ninety nine revenue <coughs> potential. So take a copy now. And sometimes the code comes automatically. Click on it, it be coming automatically. Fine. Code of the API name are coming. I will now put the description. And then I will now say data is what? Uh, uh, date type is uh, date now. 
and then the table column fine whether we drop it down it is no attribute fine we have to drop down so there are some 60 pay attributes are there so you can even match it on i don't know how much is coming in now only five are coming up now value set i'm going to create a value set as an associate if i click on the create value set now i will now say value set code fine is that k99 uh, rev potential code bring it up so take a copy of it and then I put in the description and the module drop down <coughs> Hi, ah, it must be order entry thing. <coughs> Go there. Order and then click on search now. Search now. It will be order entry. Mm, order management. Okay. FOM. Here they call them as a fusion order management now. Uh, they click on OK now. Fusion order management. FOM is the module key actually. Validation type is what I will not make it independent. And then uh, value type is what I will not say character. <coughs> and then go there. Subtype is text now. And then the maximum character is now. I don't say 10 now. And then afterwards give a save. Once when you save, the manage values will be coming. So click on save. I'll now make it as what uppercase only. So and click on save. <clears throat> click on manage values and then add values. Now. So click on uh, add now. And click on plus. I will now say the revenue potential is high now. I will now make three values over here now. <clears throat> so click on plus and then I'm going to add the values. Now. So values what k99 underscore high. I'm writing it in small, but that will be displayed as a capitals only. I'm going to click on it. Paste it now. I'm going to click on plus. <coughs> well, you can, uh, everything is uppercase only. So I think it will get automatically convert now. To uh, uppercase. Oh, God. Yeah, no, it is now asking you to enter only uppercase now. I'm going to click on it. So K99 underscore I. So you must enter the uppercase. Fine. It should convert automatically. Fine. It is now asking me to enter this one. Paste it over here. Click on plus. So I now enter only two values now. Find K99 underscore medium. Medium is a revenue potential. This particular customer is having a medium revenue potential. Only find that. Click on it. I will now give a save and close by which we have now completed the values for the value set. Now find that. Click on it. So it's not done. Give a save and close for creating this code. Now find click on save and close. Now find that. Click on it. Click on that. And then populate your code. Now, automatically it gets populated. The value set gets automatically populated. The initial values and other things are exactly like is now and click on it. And then click on save and close now. We have created the segment called uh, what I was gain and uh, potential of the customer. Now. Revenue potential of the customer segment is now created. Fine, click on save and close with the value sets and values. The segment is now ready. The value set K99 potential code cannot be assigned to segment um, of a customer in application descriptive flex fields and context uh, value sets. Uh, what is this saying? Yes, so much it is now saying. The assigned value set. Have a data type that is compatible with the column data type and its maximum length must be no longer than the column length. Okay, fine. Then there is a maximum length is now coming to the picture now. Fine. Click on it. So I will now go to the uh, value set now. Fine. View value set. Fine. I will now make it as 50 now. Fine. Click on it. You're not accepting it now. Fine. So data type is date. That's the reason. Oh, data date. Okay, fine. Yes, I will now make it as a character. Now, fine. Data type, if you make it as a character, I think it will accept it. Data type is date now. Good, good, good. You are saving close now. So, uh, date now. Data type is character. Okay, now it is accepted. Yes, data type is character. That's a good. So, now we have created a context set and then it has got a usages also. So, usage is not done. A yeah, context set with the value set and values is now created with the appropriate usage now. Now, we have to associate the context, this particular revenue potential to my main area now. Click on save and close now. It's not done. You are now. So, it's now coming back. Click on it. So, now one more. Uh, Thing is now added now. Fine, click on save and close. Now we have to add it to the main page. Now. In this place we have added. Fine, give a save and close, and then I will now go and then edit again now. Fine, in this main page we had to add it. Now. So associate the fine. Go that click on it. I will now go and then you keep a cursor on this now. Fine, it's not no coming. So actions and then go to select and add. Let me create the context which I created. I'm going to add it now. Fine, go that. I will now put K99, and then click on search now. I'm going to add it. So select it and then click on apply and then click on OK now. It's not done. No, now what happens? Uh, we have to associate the pages also. And select it, and then give a save now. Whenever you are associating it, save now. And then if you go to the pages, you will now associate the pages also. And click on plus now. Fine. So click on plus and go to associate the pages also. Fine. So I will now say K99. I will now say the display name of the page now. Fine. Uh, revenue part, and then I will now put again K99. Fine. Something to understand now. This is what is. Revenue potential. Oh God, everything is in the caps now. <laughs> so it's a K99 underscore rev underscore part underscore K99. 
K99. I have now just to distinguish this thing, or rather, I am not putting this page name is now coming like it's not fine. I click on the code now. The code comes in the description. I'm pasting it. Not fine. That. So I will now say test uh, uh, entry for uh, potential. Now see whether it comes on. I'm not sure about it. Usage, you drop it down. Not fine. Click on it. We are given some other instruction there also. Man, the additional information you all. That is the only category. If I click on OK, by which what happened? The page is now associated. So we have a pricing header information on this. Not fine. Click on it. This one. So this one has got the pages also available. If I give a save. Now, if you go to the context, we can now see everything now. Click on it. Go there. So go to the manage context now. And click on the manage context. And then here, I will now query for this display name K99. And then click on search now. <clears throat> no coming. So click on edit now. And you're going to edit. Now. Then have a look at it. This is not coming. And then here you see the associated categories will now come now. You know, coming. And then the associated pages also will come now. Oh, it's not coming. I made a mistake somewhere. Once again, outside I made I made some mistake. Now I'm going to down. So in the manage context is okay. Fine, cancel it. And then while I'm doing it, uh, I might have made a mistake actually. Fine. You cancel now. <clears throat> I'll now go there and then click on edit now. Some mistake I made now. So click on this now. And then you know, see on this one, this one. Uh, the associated context button is not coming at all. I may have to give a plus here or what? Associated context is fine. For this revenue, fine. Click on plus now. And then we get associated context rate. Click on K99. And then click on search now. Select it and then click on apply and then click on OK now. There is no coming. Give a save. So give a save. <coughs> so in this one, in this one, what happens if you click on it, you now having an associated context also. So let us now go there and then have a look at the manage context and then see whether it is not coming there or not. Click on it, K99, and then click on search now. So once I search for it, it is not coming. So if I edit it, I have to see the context pages also. Click on it. So associated pages is coming, associated categories is also coming. Got it. So everything is now complete. So our completion is now there. Can give a cancel now. So it is a three level hierarchy actually. So one is what the category. The category will be having an associated segments, and then the associated uh, associated uh, or was it, the context actually. The context will be having segments, value sets, and values. So category, <coughs> then afterwards the context, category, context, segments, and values is a three or four level hierarchy. Whatever you can say. It's all completed. Give a save and close. Having done, we go there, and then we will not deploy it. No, I'm going to deploy. I'm going to deploy. Uh, Submitting offline deployment for flux field. Oh god, I don't know offline deployment. I don't know. There's online deployment is that okay? I have to give a deploy also here. There's no uh, deploy. I know given a deploy offline now. So let me go and then search for it now whether the deployment is not happening or not. Let's see now. So deployment status is yes now. Then we have to run one more ESS job for this now. We have to run one more ESS job and call it on it. We will not run a ESS job. So go to the uh, tools and then go to the scheduled process. We will not run a ESS job. So click on schedule now. It's called publish extensible flux fields actually. UB the extensible flux fields. Publish extensible flux fields the one. The one we had done this ESS job. Then what happens? We can use start to use it on our sales orders. <coughs> publish extensible flux fields is not coming. So sales orders uses only extensible flux fields. Big dish, I have a problem. I'm able to do like you know, what happens here, header level, line level, but there's one more thing called line detail level. So I don't know, even if I configure it, where exactly it will appear on sales order, I couldn't understand this now. So you make an R&D on this now, and then I tell us about where exactly it will come. No running, so go there. I will not go to this place, give a cancel now, and it will not create a new sales order. Yes, no. May I have to even log out and log in, we'll see whether it works or not. So it's not running now. So once with that, publish extensible fleet is com completed, it will be available on your sales order. I'm going to the, I'm going to click on create order. <clears throat> you may have to even sometimes log out and log in now. We'll see where it works. Go there. COMP. <coughs> <coughs> now you go to the actions and then go to edit additional information. Our revenue potential has to come. See, it is not come. <coughs> So if you click on it, what happens? The prompt also will be coming. Then click on the prompt. Click on it. Your prompt will be coming there. Whatever prompt you have mentioned now, somewhere you have mentioned it, that prompt will be coming over here. 
So it's still not coming. That means what you had to log out and log in. Find the address. You had to log out and log in. So it's not working. So we have to log out and log in. So let's log out and log in. You see, so on the major information, you have to log out and log in. So click on confirm, and then again log in now. So go to the order management, and then you go to the order management, and then click on create order. Drop it down. Just one business unit. Computer services and vendors. Have input everything will be coming or you know. Go to the actions and then here or when they go to the edit additional information. And then I will now click on my revenue potential over there now. Now it's coming. Test entry for revenue potential. Somewhere I have written it, fine, that is coming. Please enter the revenue potential of the customer also. And these are the two terms which have entered that are coming. So if you drop down, you can say this customer is now having a high revenue potential. You can choose it and then click on OK. So we have completed the entry of the DFF now. While taking reports, we can very well take a report along with the EFF also. That's it on this one. So that's it. And then give a cancel of fine. Now, line level and then there is a line detail level. Line level I was able to do. I will not show you. you uh, Vignesh, you will not uh, do a thing now fine with that. You have to make an R&D on the line detail level. So header is now done. Remaining everything is same. The way of doing it is all same now. Click on search now. I will now go to the manage extensible fax page now. EXT. Fax now. Manage extensible fax page. So here, if you go there, if you put fulfill now, they are all called fulfillment lines. Find one is the header level. Header we have seen now. If you go and then see header, the header level. Is the header on the header information, and then if you go to the fulfill, so if you go and then query for the fulfill, fulfill, you'll have two things now. One is the line information, one is the line detail information. Now. So when I configure this, is now coming on the line actually. Line level, it is now coming as additional information. You go there, go and see the sales orders now. So it will now come as an additional line now. <coughs> so click on done now, and then in the main area itself, it will now come as an additional information actually. Go there, click on the home now and go to the order management and then click on the order management. And then when you add it, we are able to see as an additional information. Now. So drop it down. Here's one business unit. I can do that. Comp now. Go there. No populate one. I will say K19 in the Google tab now. So my name will be coming now. So here over there. <clears throat> I will not put four quantities over here. Fine. Dropship, I'm again and again testing is not working. If I succeed, I will not show it to you. Fine. A GOP dropship actually. Here. So here in the right hand side, if you go there, click on drop down, and then he will be having a line level edit additional information. The line level edit information is coming. So this you can configure over this one. Uh, fulfillment line information that will be coming on the line level. But I don't know. I configure this also, and then I am unable to understand where to see this on the sales order. Actually. Line detail information. So Vignesh, make a search of it now. Fine. Line detail information. I went there and then I, I went to this place and then seen some fine. Here also it's not a line detail is not available. If you drop it down, the line level, line detail is not available now. Edit accounting override only is available now. So the line detail is not coming here at all. In this area also, one of them is not coming at all. If you click on this drop down, you don't have any additional information. Only override line is available. So the line detail is a lab exercise for you. Fulfillment line is coming. I have chosen header and line are coming. This one, I don't know where to set it up. So, any doubts? Good then. So, we have completed the day now. We will now continue our thing on the order management on Monday. Ram, is it all clear? Huh? Ram? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good, good, good. So, bye for now. We will now continue on Monday. Okay, thanks.